Hey traders, Akil Stokes here and wanted to do a video for you. Um, was going to put this out to just syndicate members, but I put out a syndicate video last night, put out a syndicate video this morning. Jason put out another syndicate video uh, this morning. So uh, <laughs> instead of just hammering them with video after video, I want to bring this up to everyone. But we're looking at New Zealand dollar. And as you can see, there's a lot going on here. I'm going to take a minute to just kind of... Uh, erase the chart and, and go through the different possibilities that we have now first of all you know if we're looking at this on a four hour chart it's a lot different picture than here on the hourly um, but looking on the hourly we have two potential patterns if we start for our, the, our bigger move right here from our swing high to swing low you can see that our retracement comes into a 50 percent now whenever we see a 50 percent retracement what are we thinking well we're thinking potential bat pattern so we're looking at X to A, A to B coming to that 50%. You can see our B to C leg obviously coming to a 50%. And we're looking for a completion up here at 886. Now, I understand that some traders may also be looking at this as an impulse leg as well. You know, we did come down. We didn't really break this structure level. We bounce back up, and we have a clear break of structure starting right here. And, well, if we, if we bring our Fibonacci in, Fibonacci retracement in, we'll see that well that gives us a whole different opportunity because now that B leg comes up to a 618 and we know 618 we're now thinking an entirely different pattern we're now looking at X to A A to B into a 618 now I'll change that color in a little bit B to C which obviously comes into a 618 as well we're now thinking Gartley pattern with our completion at a 786 and if we take a Fibonacci extension from swing low to swing high we're looking at a 127 extension being at that same area so the question is well what do I take I have a, a is it a bat pattern is it a Gartley pattern is it is it both what do I do now again if you're looking at a four hour all you're gonna see on the four hour chart is the bat so I wouldn't even think about the Gartley but if the one hour is your trading time frame you're stuck with this dilemma what do I trade and what well, are the few options you can do and there's also you saw my picture earlier. We'll get a little fancy. There was a cipher pattern in here. Well, looking at X to A, A to B, B to C, C to D, and then you know, for you butterfly pattern traders, there's also butterfly pattern X to A, A to B, B to C, C to D up there. Um, but you know, we don't need to concern ourselves about that. Just cool to mention, but you know, not really pertinent. Um, anyway, so. The question is, what pattern do I take? Well, there's two ways you can look at it. And there's, there's two ways you can trade it, I guess, first off. A, you can decide to pick one pattern over the other and trade that one pattern. So either trading the Gartley or just trading the bat. Or you could do something where you, you average yourself into both positions. Again, you can put, if you usually trade two positions, you can put one position here. You could put at the, at the Gartley completion. You could put the second half of your position up here at the bat pattern completion. And what that's going to do is it's going to average you. It was it's going to get you in the trade if this Gartley just rolls over first and foremost. So if you're worried about missing the trade, you, you'll get involved. But if this thing does keep pushing up, keep pushing up towards our X leg, which happens to be the bat pattern completion as well, you're going to get averaged into the trade right in the middle around here. So you get a better fill for a Gartley and a worse fill for a bat. Now, what I'm personally going to do is I started off looking at this on a four hour chart. So for me, it's, you know, I'm looking at bat pattern all the way. But also, here's another reason why I would take it as a bat. And this is just a personal reason. Um, for you guys that have, have been following my videos for a while, uh, you know I'm really big on risk reward. You know I'm not, I'm not that trader that says, hey, I'm, I'm going out there winning 90% of the time, 80% win rate. I'm not that trader. You know I'm closer to you know 50%, 60% around that range. Um, I think over the last two years, I think I've been around 55 or something like that. So risk reward and, and managing that risk reward is really important to me. You know I need to make sure in order to be profitable, I need to make sure that I'm getting a consistent you know, uh, positive risk reward ratio, meaning that my reward needs to be at least equal to my risk, at least. I'd love to get two to one. So if I'm looking at 
deciding which one of these patterns I want to take, I'm looking at this. Where do stops need to be if we're, if we're taking this Gartley? Well, they need to be above X. They probably need to be above this structure level. Honestly, they should be above here, but let's just say they need to be above the X leg of our bat. Well, I'm looking at a potential stop loss of about this much. I'm looking at a reward from taking this Gartley, 3D2, looking at a reward of this much. So boom, right away I have an inverted risk reward ratio. So I would have to shoot for a 618 for target one in order to make this equal. You guys see that? If I'm looking at the bat pattern, well then it makes it a little different. My entries are up here. So if we're taking the same stop, and again, I'd probably have them above here, but let's just say we're taking the same stop. Well, now my risk is this much. Uh, it's a horrible color, but <laughs> now my risk is this much. And where are my targets at? Well, if I'm taking the same 3D2 for target one, which happens to be right at our B leg, now I'm looking at a reward looking like this. And you can see that my reward is a lot bigger than my risk. That's, that's, that's some of what I go through when, when, I, when I think about, hey, when I get a situation like this and say, I've got two patterns completing in the same area, which one do I take? Even if you average yourself in, you know, you're still getting a better risk reward ratio on this trade. And you're getting about a one to one if you get averaged in, um, a little more than one to one if you get averaged in right in the middle. So again, wanted to bring that up to you. Um, again, there is a, a butterfly pattern completion for some at this level or, or past this level right now. Again, looking at uh, X to A, A to B. B to C, C to D, not not a butterfly I would trade. Um, but if, if this is a pattern you would trade, that may give you some extra reasoning to enter at this point. Or, you know, you can always take this last step, and I, I promise I'll, I'll say this quick to get the video over with, but you see the, the RSI is currently over overbought. So you could just use a, a conservative entry technique. You know, you can wait for an L3C, a lower low, lower close with the next candle before entering. You can wait for a double top. You can wait for something more conservative than what you usually would take um, trading advanced patterns. That's, that's another way if, if you're confused about, well, I don't want to get into the Gartley, but have it stopped out because of the bat. You know, you can do that as well. So hope this was a little beneficial, a little educational for you. Um, and again, I'll, I'll get this out to you right away and, and hopefully this example isn't destroyed by the time I get it out. All right, take care traders. See you next time.